Hey, how you doing? Guess what day it is? It's hump day! And on Monday, we were talking in Monday Morning Cup of Joe about toxic positivity. And how does that contrast or conflict with positive leadership? And I shared with you that oftentimes glazes over real issues and fails to address them by you know, sharing a ton of superlatives and making people feel the warm and fuzzies, which when you're in the face of a problem, you don't feel warm and fuzzy, right? So the question is, why would a leader do this? Well, one of the root causes can be that the leader simply doesn't have the answer to the problem. And they feel as though they need to be the answer person. So rather than address the problem, they try to make people feel better when, in fact, they make people feel worse because they're not addressing the root cause. And what this leader needs to understand is, look, we don't have all the answers. We're there to serve the people. And when we don't have answers, we need to go to the people and talk about the problem. Discuss it in detail. How are they experiencing it? What are they experiencing? What's the impact and magnitude of the problem? And take a flip chart out and write all this stuff up so the team can see it. And then once you have the problem well-defined, you begin to brainstorm. You can take a look at what are some of the things that we could do to alleviate or reduce the impact and magnitude of the problem. Begin that systematic thinking that problem solving. But remember, as a leader, you're merely the facilitator. You don't have all the information. The people who do the work, they have all the information. So we need to be able to draw that information out. And we may even draw people from outside the team who may have expertise or understanding around what's not working. That's the goal as a leader is not to have all the answers, but to know how to ask the right questions to the right people to move towards solution. Now let's see, what are some of the other reasons why a, a leader would do, you know, toxic positivity? Well, perhaps they have low level of self-confidence. They're looking for reinforcement from the people or from others. They need to look good. And so they put up this false sense of positivity simply to, well, simply in hopes of getting people to like them or feeling that, you know, they're important. When in fact, if they just did the work, they would understand they are important. And what I mean by doing the work is getting out of the office checking in with people regularly and finding out what's going on you know what's what are your hurdles today what are the obstacles that you need to overcome in order to get from where you are to where we need to be as a department and then listen listen with the intent to understand remember my old buddy from seven habits stephen covey and then not try to fix it we have a tendency to want to fix it for them. And I understand that. But what we really need to do is get them into that systematic critical thinking process so that they are, are armed to fix it themselves. That's the key. Toxic positivity is counterproductive, obviously. But positive leadership is the confidence to show your confidence in your people and getting them to understand how to utilize their critical thinking skills to overcome the challenges that we face every day and then getting them so much into that habit that it becomes automatic in the future 
that they automatically go, okay, problem, what do we do? Okay, let's talk about where the problem's happening, when it's happening, how is it happening if we know anything about that? And then begin to ask the questions with all the data in front of us, because what we do, and this comes from our neocortex, a fundamental function of our brain, is we begin to look for patterns. You know, what changed during that time that may have influenced this problem to happen? And they begin to play with ideas as a team. They, because you've modeled this, they start bringing others who are affected by the problem, who, are, who work within the process in which they're identifying the problem, and they begin to do this improv discussion of problem solving, critical thinking, decision making, getting implementation ideas. That's really our role. We're not the authoritarian anymore. We're not the beatings will continue until morale improves. We're the coach and the mentor and the model, but we've got to practice the model in front of them for them to pick it up. I want you to think about that. We're halfway through the week. The weekend is in sight, my friends. I hope you're doing well. I hope you're accomplishing your goals and making sure that you put yourself out there to complete that to-do list that will move you into the future. Have a great week. Lead well. And I'll see you on Monday for our Cup of Joe.